Oh my, dude, I really? See, I see that you found my collection. Yeah. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little... Isn't this all you've ever dreamed of, Daniel? Like, I thought this was just like a joke that we used to do. A shh, a shh, 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 There, there. Is that a picture of you with Ariel? It is. I just remembered I got hello. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's uh, let us go play a board game, Daniel. I, but I have an important phone that call. It doesn't matter. You're mine now. I don't like this <laughs> at all. I don't. Come on, let's go see Puppet of Ball and play the game. I it'll be fun. I, Come on, it'll be great. Come on, it'll be great. Uh, Come on, it'll be fun. Welcome to an all new episode of Board. We're your hosts. I'm Duvall. And I'm Pixel Dan. And this show, of course, is all about showing you board games from the 50s to today, including the best and most times the worst that the board game industry has had to offer over the many decades. So last week we got to play a game based on a classic Mad Magazine comic known as Spy vs. Spy. It was a very cool game. Very That's interesting. Nice. Uh, lots, of, uh, lots of fun stuff going on in that game. So I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed that. Uh, maybe this week we get to play something just as good as Spy vs. Spy, but of course, in order for us to do so, Dan's uh, favorite part of the of the show is uh, we have to turn around and uh, hope the door opens and that Puppet Duvall will release a game from his grasp so that we can enjoy it and you can all enjoy it. Good. You don't gel. You don't like this at all, do you? I don't. You should just be gelling. You're like, I'm gelling. <laughs> Whatever. What it's is? a puppet. I just want uh, good. Uh, my game. All right, well, let's turn around and take a look and cross your fingers that we can get a game this time. So let's do, do this. Oh, ah, I don't love that. Don't either. I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Why does this have to be part of it's, playing the game? So, no. It's not cool. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Why? Every time with the lights. Why? See, now you know. Now you Why? Know. Now, now you're mad at him. Can we do something about that? That would be awesome. The lights are a little uncalled for. Just saying. A little uncalled for. <sighs> Puppet of Ball, could we have a board game to play this week? That'd be great. Okay. What? What's wrong? Oh. He's struggling oh, a little bit. Oh! oh, oh. oh. Hey. Why is this game so heavy? <laughs> Because it's like four layers. Subsearch, the three level strategy game. So like super mega battleship. Weird. Yeah, well, let's check it out. I would think that something like this would be from Thank ideal. Thank you. It's weird. I don't know, that's, looks really hard. I don't know if I'm gonna like that. It's just like Battleship. Not really. That's my prediction. I don't think it's anything like Battleship. Oh, okay. I mean, I could be completely wrong here. Prove me wrong. But it does look like Battleship. Yeah. Um, super bad. Considering this is a game from Milton Bradley, it almost seems like it should be a game from Ideal in the 60s. Um, seeing as Ideal did these kind of games, these big tier, super 3D kind of board game weird things. But for Milton Bradley of all things, um, it's very interesting. The box is, uh, well, I think it's seen better days. I'm not sure if that's healthy. A lot of water. Yeah, I like the there. stains yeah, and everything all over the box. Pretty, uh, but, uh, might be some moldy thing. Uh, you can tell how this game is uh, very much a 70s era game by the kids on the front. Look at those kids. They're, uh, they got some sweet hair. Dude, that, that kid's wearing suede. Having a great time, that's for sure. He's wearing suede. Is that little kid in his little leisure suit? He's the king of suede. Yeah, he is. He's awesome. Like my leisure suit. Like yeah. Subsurge. So. Wow, we got a lot going on. Comes in this a lot box. of pieces. There's this base wow. piece. 
Okay. And uh, I've already taken the liberty to. Uh, I told you it was Battleship. Mm, looks like Puppet Devall already took the liberty to uh, separate all these pieces for oh, us here. He did this. I'm guessing. Mm. It's amazing. It's just like you carrying the game, and then suddenly the game's down here. It just wow. happened. I forgot that even happened. Oh, that's so freaky. Why did you remind me? Sorry. It's a weird it's household. It is weird. Strange why, things happen. I don't know why I come over here. This is weird. Because you like me. Okay. I don't like you. So there's a lot of stuff to this game. The, uh, oh wow, the instruction manual is, uh, three, five, seven, nine. Do we have enough time to go through all these? Well, pages. Maybe we should just make up our own game. No, it's not that bad. It should be that bad. It doesn't look like it's too... Okay, it might be a little complicated, but it doesn't look like it's that complicated. It's like 52 pages. That's pretty complicated. Yes, because 12 is 52. It's the same. Fair enough. So we got that. It's just math. Math not well. <laughs> We've got these neat little 3D portions here. These are actually the player pieces. All right. So these would be the oh. pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of cool. Flagship status pad. Uh-huh. Load ships with white pegs. Miss is a white peg. And near miss is a red peg. Direct, Direct hit, hit is a flag. Flag! We've got the cool subsearch torpedo uh, torpedo torpedo shot. Yep. Look at that. That's, that's what that says. I know. Torpedo shot. Uh, looks like it's kind of hard to get a hit because it's just these two spaces on the side. That, wow. That's the only chance you have to get a hit. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I got a hit. So you barely. Uh, is that the pointing end? Oh, yes. Okay, I see. Yeah. Is that the pointing end? It doesn't. Like, it's hard to tell because it's just like a missile there. What's the front end? Okay. Well, gotcha. Yes. I see. So, yeah. It's got a little bit of arrow on the very end. We've got these cool uh, water. Oh, it's it supposed looks, to simulate water. It looks like real water. Yeah, I know. It's kinda... No, Danny, don't drown. Come up for air. That was my merman. That was a good merman. Yeah, nice one bad. You've been working on that. Yeah. Pretty proud of you there. <laughs> You've got your uh, several different playing fields. You've got the depths of 100 for each player. You've got depths of 200 for each player. And depths of 300 for each player. Oh my goodness. How much? Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm a little overwhelmed right Side now. art. Little fishies. Oh, that's pretty cool. Under the sea. Under the sea. Now we've taken to that direction. Oh, that's upside down. Under the sea. Oh, before you were Under above the, the sea. sea. I know, right? We were above the sea. Part of your world. <laughs> Sorry. You could do that all day. And then, ooh, I found a white peg. And then you've got your, uh, this is the top playing piece. This is uh, your little dock areas here. Um, you've got your sea lanes, uh, the torpedo shots. Which we'll get to. Which torpedo is, uh, shot! Which is pretty interesting how the torpedoes actually work in this game as well as the sea lanes. Alright. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, uh, yeah. So, why do we continue to get games with massive setup? Yeah, uh, how do we put this thing together and how do we play? Well, that's, that's my question. It's a good question. Let's, uh, two questions. Uh, I count it as one. Okay. Let's put this bad boy together and see what we've got. This should be interesting. So before we can even play, we have to set up the game. And the first thing you have to do is slide the side walls into place. Next, you move the end walls into place, connecting them to the side walls. Then the center wall slides down into place. Under the sea, under the sea, and darling. Duvall, it's there. stop singing! I will hurt you. Aww. Then you insert your depth fields onto the playing field here. And finally, you attach the top surface into place. The cool thing here is this is the first game we have played where we have to sit across from one another to play it. That's right. This really already feels like what we said it looked like. Battleship on steroids. Yep. All right. Well, the game is all set up, and we are sitting at odd angles. Yes. 
At least you, you, sleep, you don't have a table leg in your crotch. Yes, I do. Oh, okay, good. I'm not the only one. We're I don't tied. feel so weird. <laughs> so as you can see, the board is all set up. It's all ready to go. It's all uh, very big. Um, rules have been read. Uh, complicated at that. Um, really, though, it's not that terrible of a game I think play. it's another one of those games where it looks and it sounds more complicated than it actually is once you start playing. Yes. And I think once we start kind of showing everybody what to do, it's not going to be so bad. Yeah, it's not too terrible. And then if you ever buy this game, you can just watch this video instead of trying to read 52 pages of instructions. Or 12. <laughs> Dan's stuck on 52. I say 12. At least 65. Okay. At least. How did the number go up? I don't know. Let's play. So... What you get with your little setup is you get a whole bunch of uh, familiar to anyone play Battleship. I just mixed my white and red pegs. Uh, the answer is to mix white and red. I know, right? Weird. You get all these white pegs, just like Battleship. Uh, red pegs, just like Battleship, considering this is a Milton Bradley game, it makes sense. <laughs> okay, so we have some surface vehicles and some subs. Correct. Three each, as well as a mine and three flags. So we each place our surface vessels anywhere here on the home ports. As well as load up the ships with nine total white pegs. Uh, these will come into use here pretty soon. Next, we each secretly place our subs. We can place them on any of the undersea levels here, from level 1 to 3, on any of the numbered spots. You can place them all on one level, two on one and the last on another, clump them together, doesn't matter here. But, once they're placed, you cannot move them after the fact. And they can't be moved during the actual gameplay, correct? Right. Next, we each place our mine here. Now you can place these on only the surface or 100 foot depth level. And it can be placed on any of the numbers on those two levels. Except that you can't place the mine on a space with or directly over a sub. And normally you would write the location on a sheet of paper and put it safely away, so there's no cheating. But uh, we won't do that here because I trust you. Oh, thanks, dude. All right, you got your subs placed? My subs are placed. My subs are placed. Are okay. we ready to try this? I think so. I'm who goes first? I'm a little frightened. Who goes first? Mm -hmm. Red goes, player does. Red, Red player first. goes first every time. Okay, what do I do? Well, each turn has to consist of moving your surface vehicles. You enter the water from any one of the four arrowed spaces on your home port. Okay, and do I spin to move? Nope. You're allowed to move one, two, or three spaces here across the surface, and you can move forward, backwards, to the side, as well as diagonally. Cool. Now, you can only move one ship in a turn here, so no moving multiple ships, Danny. I thought you said you trusted me. Oh, <laughs> um, I lied. Uh-huh. At the end of your move, you can declare if you are or are not dropping a depth charge as well as deciding if you want to do either of those, as well as firing a torpedo, which we will get to as we play. If you decide to drop a depth charge, the ship that you moved, and the, well, the one that you're dropping the depth charge from, has to have a white peg in order to do so. That's right, you call out a depth and a number, for example, 208. And I declare if it was a direct hit, a near miss, or a complete miss. And in this case, it's a complete miss. With that, you record the shot by placing a white peg in the explosion space and four other white pegs in the adjacent spaces. A near miss happens if the sub is on one of the four adjacent spaces surrounding the explosion and on the same level as we called out. You then place the white peg in the number of the explosion and then four red pegs on those adjacent spaces, giving you a way to track where the ship might be. A direct hit happens if the sub is on the exact level and number called out. You sink the sub and then place a flag in the spot of the explosion to track the sub sank. You remove a depth charge peg from your surface ships each time you fire. When your ship is empty, you have to move back to one of the dock spaces and refill your ship.
You can also decide to fire a torpedo, and this maneuver is really a last ditch effort. That's right, see if you are down to your last sub, and there is a ship directly above you, you can fire a torpedo to attempt to sink that ship. To do so, you declare that you're firing a torpedo, and then you spin the spinner. If it lands on hit, then the surface ship you fired upon is sunk. Land on a miss, and the other player knows exactly where your sub is. Yeah, that's the drawback. You fire a torpedo and you still have all of your subs, the opposing player suddenly knows exactly where that sub is hiding, giving them the opportunity to sink you the next round. Okay, what happened with the mine? Well, when a player ends his or her move on the exact number as their opponent's mine, their ship is automatically destroyed. And then both the ship and mine are removed from the board and play then continues. Okay, none of that is too complicated. So what does it take to win this thing? The first player to sink their opponent's three subs, or by using the mine and torpedoes, sinks the three surface ships, win the game. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, this is getting close. We're both down to a sub, but you're down to only one ship. Dang it. I still have two subs. And I, I know where you're at after I've gone back to refuel. But we're both only one ship away from exploding. Okay, I've moved. I'm nowhere near you yet, though. Uh, let's see, uh, 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 19200. It's a near miss. Ah. <laughs> it's a near miss. Yes. But you know what? What? I'm uh, going to just move one space, and I'm firing a torpedo. Uh, Last ditch effort, right? Crap. crap Last ditch effort. Crap. Crap. <sighs> Come on. This could be a win or a lose for me. I may win. Booyah! Booyah! Sink it! Torpedo shot! <laughs> now you have no ships, which means I... Once again, win the game. I win the game. Celebration! Surface, surface, surface! My sub surfaced. It was it was on uh, 25, by the way. I just, I just beat you at Battleship yeah. on steroids. Yeah, yeah, you did. Woo. Yeah. So the sub-search game from Milton Bradley, technically it is Battleship on steroids to a certain degree. I would like to know when the major motion picture is coming. I don't think they're going to do that because Battleship what? did not do well. Oh, sub-search the movie would be amazing. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. It would be <laughs> awful. Uh, well, there you go, though. That's uh, that's the Milton Bradley sub-search game, which, as Danny said, it is really, technically, Battleship on steroids to a certain degree. Um has some of the same playing features as Battleship, except they've just rewritten the whole rule book with that by adding mines and the playing fields and everything. The idea is still the same. Yes. It's just a different way of getting there. Yes. Completely so, different way of getting yeah. there. So um, it's pretty interesting once you kind of get the rules down pat. Um, the, the instruction manual, while it is... 62 pages. It is rather large. Once you have really gone over it and kind of understood a little bit better on what exactly it takes to play this game it becomes much easier to understand and go okay well I get it because really when it comes down to the core of it the gameplay itself is very simplistic it really is I mean there's not a lot to do it's just they have to explain it all out into you know finite details it's one of those games that sounds scarier than it is and then yeah. once you start playing you go oh it's not so bad yeah, it is a really cool game, though. The board is really cool. Um, I love the playing fields. Uh, I love the little details on it. You know, we showed the fish at the start of the show and the little fish insert that you can kind of see under the sea there. Well, it's neat. I mean, like, the way it's set up, we've got it completely blocked, so I can't see your side, you can't right. see my side. And I think it's pretty neat how it's, it's the same. Like we said, it's the same idea of Battleship, where you've got a playing field I can't see. Right. I've got one you can't see, but it's, it's multi-layered. Yeah. It's not just your standard, you know, you've got one area. I've got three different playing fields yeah. that he's got to try to guess where my ships are and that just it's a whole new level yeah. to you know it's like I said same kind of game different way of getting there and there's, so. there is a lot of strategy involved in this too and the fact that um, just like Battleship before it you really have to plan things out and go where do I want to start well, I'm going to start on level 100 200 300 mm -hmm. and as Dan said during your initial play you don't want to really set your subs up 
during the first few numbers out of the dock because people are going to stop and drop bombs no matter where they as soon move. as they come out that's yeah. like, like unless you want to play it risky or try to trick somebody which i'm sure you can get real sneaky with it why is, but, uh, why is my ship surrendering well you know he lost he got torpedo shot this is a fun game i think it's it's an interesting game for two players of course um I wouldn't really say it's a game for any family nights, but if you're just got some friends over and bored, and you guys just want to have a good time, some old games like this is they never make a game like this anymore. No, this, this is this one of those happen. games that's totally lost the time. That's real fun to go back and experience. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it though until I lost. Yeah, well, I enjoy it always because I always win. Booyah! You remember that time when you almost got me, but then I torpedo shot you? Mm. Torpedo shot! And that's why you're surrendering, in case you're wondering. I know you asked me, why am I surrendering? Because you're afraid of torpedo shot. And my boat's fired it to you. What are you doing, sore loser? No, no, no. You can't just be putting subs back up on the... You can't... Your boats are all dead. You can't just be putting them back up on the board. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, oh. If you guys have any fan letters, questions, comments, you want to tell Dan how horribly sore, awesome winner he is? What? You're a sore winner. Sore, horribly awesome winner. You are good at grammar. Grammar great. Write in and tell this guy how good at grammar he is. You can write to us at board at toyworldorder.com. Send us a letter, your fan art, whatever you'd like to send us. We'd love to hear from you. At the end of the season, we're going to put together a special episode where we show some behind-the-scenes footage, talk about a lot of the season, kind of maybe give you some hints about what's coming next season and answer fan questions that's a lot of things in one episode have you seen the show there's a lot of things in every episode some of them don't make sense i've actually never seen it you know what while you guys are at it why don't you watch last week's episode which is right over dan's face which is great i'm gonna watch it it's in front of your face you have no choice i'm going this way now you can stand there and hold it if you want i'm, I'm going i'm gonna go play with some other toys let's see later